Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode here on the Resto Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. And this week we're still in the middle of lockdown here in the UK, so unfortunately I can't take the MG out and about on the road, but what I can do is take you on a bit of a tour. This is my 1969 MGB GT, and I bought it three years ago, and that's really why I wanted to do this little talk with you. It's near enough three years to the day, and it is featured really heavily here on the YouTube channel. I thought we could do a bit of a talk around, tell you what I've done to it, what my plans are for the future, and some little trips and so on that I have planned for it. So without any further ado, let's have a look at the MGB GT. <laughs> So, as I said, this model was built in 1969 and delivered to its customer on the 1st of January 1970. Um, it's the Mark II model and it's in probably the wrong colour of red. Why do I say it's the wrong colour? Because the previous owner sprayed it in his own garage. And to be honest, he did a fairly good job for home DIY, but it could do a bit of a tidy up. What have I done to it since I bought it? Well, in the three years of my ownership, um, when I got it, it was running quite rough. And that was traced down to some pretty poor compression in the engine. So after a compression test, at about a year in, we got a brand new cylinder head, um, which cost, obviously cost a significant amount of money. The engine was taken out, it got a new clutch, um, it got electronic ignition, and lots of modifications under the bonnet. Nothing too severe, but I'll show you under the bonnet in a little second. Um, my wife and I also used it significantly over the first couple of years but as you can see from the baby seat in there life changed a little and it probably doesn't get just as much use as we would like right now underneath it's had completely new suspension at the back including springs bushes u-bolts the whole works at the back and the interior has had the headlining removed which was sagging but revealed a fairly decent headlining underneath it all as well bodywork not a huge amount has been done there actually um but we'll talk about that in a second and other things that has been done to pick up the image of the car the wheels have been sandblasted and powder coated in chrome powder coat and new spinners all the way around the car so let's have a wee look under the bonnet and we'll first of all start off there and talk about what we did under there so here we are under the bonnet of the mg bgt and here is the venerable 1.8 later four cylinder B series engine. Um, very strong unit, though. as long as it's well maintained, these generally are quite resistant to wear and tear. They don't enjoy really being revved all that high, but will go forever. Unfortunately, this car is not an overdrive model, um, so it does tend to rev a bit higher on long journeys, but I don't do a lot of motorway driving or dual carriageway driving, so it's fine for me, but would love an overdrive someday, so watch this space. Under here, what have I done? Starting at the back, the heater box was taken out, completely refurbished. Actually did a mini series here on the YouTube channel on how to refurbish your MGB heater box. So definitely look that up if that's something you're interested in. Um, to the engine itself, it came out. As I said, brand new cylinder head, all painted up. This is actually hammerite red. I know it's not the correct red, but I thought rather than putting the nice deep cherry red that the engine should be, I thought it would set out a bit um, against the colour of the car, which, as I said at the start, is not particularly correct. So that's why I used Hammerite. If I ever go through and do a full restoration in this car, the engine will be done correctly. Um, new thermostat housing as well. Underneath here, we have a spin-on oil filter conversion, um, mainly for ease of change. And I didn't like the fact that the original oil filter sat nearly upside down. So the car sat for any time at all. The oil drained out of the filter, and then whenever I started, until the pressure built up, it nearly felt like the engine was being starved. So didn't really enjoy that, therefore the modification. Elsewhere in here, at the time, same time, we got a new Lucas Sports coil, and not very well, you can see under there is a brand new electronic distributor. Well, I say electronic distributor, the one I received did not fit down inside the block, so I had to use the old distributor and take the electronic ignition module out of it, but that wasn't a huge problem. Also down there that you can't really see is a brand new starter motor, which is the high torque. And it was a great job because the solenoid in this went, put the high torque in for not a huge amount more money. And it's completely revolutionized the starting of the car. Elsewhere under here, um, radiator got flushed multiple times through and got a new coat of paint, really smartened it up. 
brand new oil, oil cooler, new oil hoses, new fuel hoses, carburetors tuned up, timing and ignition and mixture all set as well. And I have to say it runs really, really well. And I have to say it actually has held up quite well. It's two years since any engine work is really done under here and it looks pretty tidy. A little weep of oil probably from this port, but I'm really a bit too frightened to tighten up too much or in case I shear the top off the oil cooler. So other than that, there's probably not a huge amount else to say about under here. So let's have a look around the interior. Sitting on the inside of the MGB GT, the largest change probably has been this lovely banjo steering wheel. You may remember from old videos if you're a long-term subscriber that there was a Motolita brown leather and gold metal steering wheel, as I'm sure you can imagine was very fetching. Um, replaced this, bought it locally, got it for a bit of a bargain. Very pleased with that. And in fact, the cost of this was covered by selling some spare instruments that I had. I uh, got them in a box from the previous owner. Otherwise in here, not a huge amount to say. Got rid of the wooden gear knob, got this lovely Bakelite reproduction. Um, does need a nut under here, if anyone knows the correct thread from that, I'd be much obliged. Um, inside of here, in terms of future modifications, both the seats could definitely do with a refurb. As you can see, this is quite saggy. Um, that is certainly on the cards. I'm hoping to keep the original covers. I know they're a bit tired looking, but I think with a bit of a clean up, some soap and water, they definitely look quite good. Also in here, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the headlining was quite saggy and it wasn't the original, so we pulled it out and actually what's underneath is quite good. Yes, there's a little bit of damage there, but overall it's a pretty good neck and it doesn't stand out hugely against the rest. Interior of this has always been quite smart and I really like the the black on red contrasting piping. I think it really looks quite good. So seats got recovered, a bit of sound insulation as well, and some proper dynamatting I think would be really good along the floors and up over the transmission tunnel. As I think the inside of the car gets extremely hot uh, on a run, even during colder weather, the exhaust runs underneath there and it really transfers a lot of heat up to the cabin. Moving back to the exterior of the car, and I really wish I could take this out and about to give you a better show of it out in the sun, but the biggest visual change, I suppose, has been the wheels and spinners. The wheels um, got all four done. I didn't do the spare because no one is going to be too expensive, but they came up really well with this chrome powder coat. And um, obviously it's more just like a sparkly silver rather than the chrome as such, but new spinners. And I think the whole set really set them off. So that was a big visual upgrade to the rest of the car but of course whenever you upgrade something it makes look something else look worse and you can see the old cellulose paint that the previous owner put on has just gone a bit blotchy so it needs a good tea cutting back long term though this car needs a complete restoration it needs a body shell completely stripped down rust repaired and when i say rust typical mgb areas along the seam i don't think this is too deep but i really want it not to go too deep so Got it done sooner rather than later. Same along there. And every time I seem to wash this car, I find more areas. Problem under here. The cells actually seem quite sound, which I'm glad about because those are meant to be an MGB disaster area. Thankfully haven't gone there yet. And along the bottom of these lights, look at that big piece of nastiness there. Don't really want to put a screwdriver under there, but I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be much left if I did. You'll also notice that the bumpers front and rear are silver painted rather than chrome. That's certainly something that would need addressed during any future restoration. A lot of the chrome work has gone a bit nasty. Bumpers, this here as well, look, it's clearly quite scratched and I have tried to polish it, but it doesn't come up. If someone could tell me, I don't think it's aluminium, but someone could advise me a wee bit better than that, I'd be much obliged. I thought it would lift with a bit of a heavy cut and polish, but it really has not done so. Other visual changes are the Correct black and silver number plates. Um, the, this one here um, this is the white uh, 3D reflective one that was on it. Probably is correct really for period, but I prefer the black and silver. It's all three Rescue Saga classics there in a row. Elsewhere around the exterior, the rear suspension, I'm not going to be able to show you really in this video, but you can see the result of it is that the back of the car sits far too high fairly significant gap between the top of the tower and the arch and looking at original MG um, sales footage shows that really the top of the tower should be at least 
at the brim of the arch or maybe just up inside the arch. So I've passed it off for long enough that the springs need to settle, but it's coming up on 18 months to two years since those springs were put in and there's quite a few miles in the car now. So I'm going to think that those springs aren't really going to settle much. So my plan is to put lowering blocks in and just to raise the axle by an inch, drop the car by an inch. So therefore it just looks a little bit better. And it shouldn't really compromise ground clearance too much because the exhaust in this car did trail a little bit on the old saggy springs. So what about the plans for the future? Well, first of all, I love a brand new exhaust underneath this. Sports exhaust, free flow, stainless steel, fit and forget, job done. I think that would really set the car off and make a brilliant noise. I'd also love an overdrive. Um, I'd toyed with the idea of the M Mark or the Mazda MX-5 five-speed conversion, but I think the cost is going to be prohibitive compared to the value of the car. So an overdrive gearbox, if and when I can source one, will be going into this MG. Engine-wise, everything's running fine. Can't complain there. Drivetrain, polyurethane bushes needing in the front, and it also needs a new drive shaft because I think the ends are worn and, I can't, and the grease, no, no amount of grease is going to fix that. Interior, as I said, needs new seat stuffing. And in an ideal world, the whole thing would be stripped down, body shell blasted, any welding done, and get it painted in the correct tartan red, which is visible underneath the dashboard. So I really hope you've enjoyed this walk and talk around the MGB GT. Unfortunately, yes, we are stuck here in the garage at home, but such is life at the minute here in the UK. Hopefully this pandemic will lift soon and we're able to go out and enjoy our classics again. But in the meantime, we have to make most of the time in the garage, getting caught up in projects, as I'm sure you've watched some of the Toylander videos, and if not, you can certainly catch up with those too. Hopefully in the near future, we'll be doing a video on the Morris Minor coming up maybe next week or the week after. Another video on the Toylander, some progress is being made there as well. And if I can, it'll be a video on the Land Rover, all filmed, of course, in line with the UK government regulations. I hope you really watch, enjoyed watching this video and you find out a bit more about my 1969 MGB GT. It's a rolling restoration project here in the channel, so be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And, and if you've liked, the com liked this video, give us a thumbs up and fire me a comment. I reply to all the comments personally, so I'm always happy to hear from any fans. If you have any questions or need advice or you're happy to give me advice, I'm more than happy to ha receive that. So once again, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio!